Then it's fantastic to see you here with Team Bray Racing at Gulf Western Oil. You must be really fired up about the 2017 season, mate. It's a proud Australian company. I'm a proud Aussie, and we always will be. Um, 2017, here we come. Like, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get back in the cars full time, uh, get back beside Dad full time, so we're back to a team. I hear there's a bit of rivalry between you boys, and uh, I hear from you you're going to knock your old man off, but he tells me it's going to be the other way around. Tell us what's going to happen there in your top door slammer. I tell a lot of people that the rivalry will always be there, but I'm always number one, so it's not really effective. So um, <laughs> if he's happy with number two, we can settle with that. But uh, the top door slammer thing, a lot of people think that you're not competitive because we're father and son and we're teammates and all that, but I tell you now, out of all the guys in the competition, he's the one I want to beat the worst. Well, hey, dads are always arguing with their sons and vice versa, so I suppose it happens on the racetrack too. Probably more in the pits than on the racetrack. When we've got our helmets on, we can't talk and we can't hear each other, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Tell us about your top door slam at the Corvette. The 79 Corvette here, it's a brand new car to me. It's only 12 months old, probably this year. The car's performing probably probably in the top two, top three cars now. I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's been 579 at 252 mile an hour. You know, that probably puts me, you know, one or two at nearly every race if I can keep the car consistent performing there. But, you know, like, like I say, the tough Australian thing, that's an Aussie built car, built in my factory at my workshop, built by Murray Anderson, the, the, the tubes. I build all the engine and um, yeah, we make it work. So you've got a tough Australian car, tough Australian race team, and a tough Australian oil. <laughs> we can't lose. <laughs> exactly. Tell us about the power plant in this vet. It's got a 521 cube um, Chrysler Hemi, obviously. It's all billet because, you know, billet holds together under boost a little bit better. It probably makes around 3,800 to 4,000 horsepower. You see the thing sticking out the bonnet of it. That's a PSI supercharger. That actually is what makes the engine make that horsepower. It puts roughly around 52 pound of boost into it. It's pretty much a time bomb with really good head studs, but they're very reliable for what we do to them. Like we can take them to 11 and a half thousand RPM and we hold them there for probably, uh, probably one and a half seconds before we shift the next gear and then we go there again. So on a pass, they see probably 11 and a half thousand for probably 35, 40% of the pass. So for a dirty old push rod motor, they're pretty good. That is big RPM for such a big engine, but how often do you rebuild them? Rebuilding as in they come out of the chassis rails after every event and I, um, I put new bearings and all that in them. It's only for the fact of the RPM, the bearings, Realistically, I could I could probably run a whole season on, but with the RPM and all that we do, we've got to keep the engine beautiful and fresh because at a racetrack, when you've got 70 minutes to turn them around, you don't want to be hurting anything on the engine. You don't want to be taking them out. You don't want to be replacing them. But um, in between races at, at the racetrack, so in between the qualifiers, we just run the tappets, we check all the oil filters, we do everything we can to make sure the engine's alive and beautiful, and then we um, put it back on the ground and take it back out. So speaking of Gulf Western Oil, Oil is probably one of the most important parts of this whole combination, isn't it? Because these engines do punish absolutely everything to do with yeah. it, don't they? Lubrication in the engines um, is probably the highest thing on these engines because anyone can build a good motor, but trying to keep them together is the hard part. Now there's another car I'm very, very excited about. It's like a new generation of drag racing at this level, and that's your Toyota. Tell us about the Toyota. Yeah, yeah, well a lot of people say that I swear when I say Toyota because anyone knows me, I've had SR20s my whole life. Um, not that I jump the fence, I'm a trader or anything, um, the World Series and, and, and chasing all the number one guys down, they're all racing Toyota 2Js. So I, I looked down that road and I, and I started sniffing at a 2J and I didn't like the smell of it. So um, I'm, I'm looking more, I want to go to a little bit more cubic inches so hopefully I don't have to put as much boost as them guys in and rev them as hard. So what sort of horsepower capability are you expecting out of the bigger engine? I'd be disappointed if I couldn't make 2500. They've gone 252 mile an hour with a 2J. That's as quick as one of these door slammers behind me and they make nearly 4000 but the cars are extremely lighter and turbochargers make um, horsepower a lot easier and a lot better than a supercharger will. So I, I believe that they, if they're making 2500, surely with more cubes and a, a little bit more R&D and maybe even a bit, bit of billet blocks in there, I can make um, that if not more. I mean there is nothing quite like a screaming six. We all love our V8s but that screaming six cylinder, there's, there's no sound like it is there? No, well a lot of people think I'm, I'm, there's something wrong with me or I'm sick because I get to drive these things behind me. I've got burnout cars, mum and dad have got 20 custom cars and everything's a V8 and you walk into my area in the workshop and it's either four or six cylinder and everyone just laughs their head off because I drive Datsuns every day and I race turbocharge fours and sixes and, and people don't get it but it's just in my head I'm, I'm in the next generation like you say this is the new generation I don't think these these big beasts behind me will ever be replaced with them but I tell you now the, the six cylinders are tapping on the door believe me.